emotions, attitudes and to some extent actions. Mm. There is no consciousness in this. Mm. If we are understanding that the way we think, feel and act is our consciousness, no. Mm. It is like we are mistaking a plant, we are mistaking the flower for the soil. We are mistaking expressions for the source. This is something that's happening everywhere, not just here. People think by changing attitudes their consciousness will change. No. By changing attitudes, certain actions will change. Yes, positive, beneficial, but it is not truly transformative. Change will happen, transformation will not happen. If I have to define a distinction between change and transformation. Change means the residue of the past will still remain. A transformation means nothing of the past will remain, which is what is needed today if you want to create a new world, if you want a new generation to have a fresh life. It's been expressed in so many ways. Being in this part of the world, what they are familiar with generally, Someone said, leave the dead to the dead, it's very significant. Mm. This is not coming out of recklessness, mm. this is not coming out of unconcern, but this is coming with the concern that you must be a fresh life. Mm -hmm. You can learn many things from the past about how to conduct yourself, but there is nothing to learn from the past about how to be because you are a complete life by yourself. Mm. You don't have to learn how to be a life from the past. Maybe you have to learn how to be a good engineer. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to learn how to be something else in the society from the past, but you don't have to learn how to be a li life from the past because past has nothing to do with this. This is a fresh life and this is a complete life. Mm. Consciousness is that dimension which is the very source of who we are. Mm. Our intentions, our actions, our thoughts and our attitudes are a consequence of that. Mm. Or in other words, we are trying to fix the consequence without fixing the source. Mm. Now all these distinctions of variety of things that they said, gender discriminations, racial discriminations, every kind, Okay, uh, somebody is a Hindu, somebody is a Muslim, somebody is a Googler, it becomes a religion after some time, believe me <laughs> Second generation, they will become a religion by themselves, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm saying <laughs> you, you see a football match going on, mm. it's like a religion, two different clubs, they're willing to fight and kill each other, mm. it's just a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So where does this come from? The nature of being human is this. See, there are four dimensions of our mind. Mm. In modern societies, the nature of, nature of our education has constipated our mind in such a way mm. because we are just largely using just one dimension which we call as the intellect. Mm -hmm. The other dimensions of mind, if I have to use Indian terminology, it means buddhi, ahankara, manas and chitta. Mm. What buddhi means is the intellect. Mm. You do what you want. The nature of the intellect is to slice things open and see. If you leave the world in the hands of your intellect, your intellect will chop it into a million pieces and will want to chop it into further micro pieces and want to chop it into further micro micro pieces depending upon how sharp your intellect is. The sharper your intellect, the more you dissect the world. You cannot stop it because that is the nature of the intellect and it's good. So you must apply intellect only to know the material aspects of life. You can't know life this way. If I want to know… if a doctor wants to know a, some aspect of you materially, what's wrong with you, he will take a biopsy and in a way he opens it up and looks at it. It's okay on that level. But I can't know you as a person mm -hmm. by dissecting you. I can't know you as a life by dissecting you. I can know a part of your body 
maybe. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I can know parts of the world to make use of it, but I can't know life as such. Mm -hmm. So intellect has been over-elegized. Mm -hmm. In the last hundred, hundred and fifty years, this is a European impact on the rest of the world where we think our thought is supreme. Mm -hmm. Someone went to the extent of saying, I think so I, ex so I exist or whatever <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask all of you a simple question. Tell me, is it because we exist we may think? Or is it because we think we exist, which way is it? Hello? <laughs> because we exist we may think. Because people are in such a state of mental diarrhea all the time, non-stop it's going on, they think it's more of an existence than existence. Hmm. But my head is all the time empty unless I want to think about something. Mm -hmm. So I know thought is not necessary, I can just live here without the thought. When I want I will think, otherwise I'll keep quiet. Just like my hand, if I want I use it, otherwise I keep it here. Similarly, you must be able to do this with your mind just because you lost control over your mind and you think it's everything because it's entering into every aspect of your life where it has no business. Hmm. Thought has been over-elegized by people hmm. and the very nature of the thought is such that if you think, it must be logical, it cannot be any other way. Well, what somebody is thinking may, Ill may look illogical to you, but they have found their own logic. The most extreme person that you have met, within himself or herself, they have their own logic, isn't it so? They are not speaking illogically as far as they are concerned. Mm. They have found their own kind of logic. Logic means it needs two. Logic means it needs division. Now, with logically you're trying to arrive at inclusive consciousness, it's not going to happen. <laughs> because you're using a knife to stitch, this is not going to work. Mm. If you use a knife to cut, it's efficient. You use a knife to stitch things together, you'll only tear it up further 